The law can be a guardian of people who are vulnerable and who are sick, but the law can also be an awful nuisance in this area of HIV uh, and AIDS. Uh, and um, in the past, I have served on a number of bodies, most recently the Global Commission on HIV and the Law, looking at the way in which the law is an impediment to a su a successful strategies. Uh, that report uh, was basically dealing with two areas. The first was the law uh, and vulnerable groups. Often the law is the cause of the vulnerability. I'm thinking, for example, the laws against men who have sex with men, gay men, the laws uh, that deal with prisoners, the laws that deal with refugee applicants, the laws that deal with sex workers, prostitutes, the laws that deal with injecting drug users. Uh, in these areas, law can be a burden on the person and on their freedom, on their ability to see the importance of uh, getting the uh, HIV test and getting onto antiretroviral drugs if they turn out to be positive. So that's the first category of the report. The second was dealing with an area that sounds boring but is actually very important, and that is intellectual property law patent law, the law that protects authors and inventors uh, in relation to their inventions, especially pharmaceutical inventions. And um, whilst there needs to be protection of the rights of inventors of new drugs, uh, some of these protections are at the moment disproportionate uh, both to the needs of invention and to the rewards that should go and too costly for people in especially developing countries. One of the areas that's been brought out in the uh, Melbourne conference has been uh, in respect of one of the so-called co-infections. The co-infections uh, dealing with hepatitis. There are a number of hepatitis varieties, but two of them, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, uh, are quite common infections. In fact, there are millions of people with these infections and just taking hepatitis C there is a course of therapy uh, which can uh, effectively cure a person of hepatitis C. Hepatitis C in many many cases goes on to cause cirrhosis of the liver and also uh, it, it causes cancer and it's a very bad condition and it is contagious so it's a, it's a spreading condition. Uh, unfortunately, the drugs that um, are uh, given in those cases uh, are extremely costly because of the costs that are imposed by the patent holder, uh, Gilead uh, Pharmaceuticals. Uh, in the United States, if you want the 12-week course that will cure you, you have to pay $84,000 for the whole course. In Australia, I assume it must be roughly the same. Uh, the uh, patent owner has made it available in India for $2,000, 84 to 2, and it's made it available in Egypt where there's a very big hepatitis C uh, um, con uh, in infection uh, for $800. Uh, it costs $84 approximately to make the drugs. So we're talking about drugs that cost $84 for uh, $84,000 uh, and it's the disproportionate to the inventiveness to require that people pay that amount and of course it puts it completely out of the, out of the uh, possibility for people in many developing countries. I think it's a long-term issue for HIV and AIDS and also for pharmaceutical products generally and perhaps for other areas of patent law. Um, it's a long-term issue because at the moment the law on this subject is stated in the so-called TRIPS agreement, the Trade and Related uh, Intellectual Property Law of the World Trade Organization. And that uh, agreement is basically in the hands of a body, the World Trade Organization, which is not a United Nations agency. It's essentially a cartel of the, uh, of the countries, many of them with intellectual property to protect. Uh, and the law in this subject has developed without due respect 
for the fundamental human right to access to essential health care. And what is needed, as the Global Commission on HIV and the Law pointed out, is a new inquiry at an international level, inaugurated by the Secretary-General of the United Nations, to investigate um, a reconciliation between the right to health and the right of authors to proper protection for their inventions. And at the moment, uh, all, the, all the eggs are in the basket of the authors, and uh, it's not really a proportionate balance. And that's why the Global Commission suggested that there should be a, a, a high-level investigation. And that is being considered at the moment by the Secretary-General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, and I am still hopeful that um, Secretary General Bunn, who has been such a wonderful leader in issues of HIV and of sexuality, will sign off on this and get the high level investigation uh, to proceed. But of course it will have some pretty powerful enemies and uh, we've still got to wait. You just have to watch this space. <laughs>